Today we are going to talk, ab talk, to, talk about BDG and Python. What's the agenda? We will first start with the context and go to BDG and accept acceptance testing, which will follow up with Gherkin, the Gherkin language. And we talk uh, mainly uh, about the BA framework, which is used to to practice BDD, and we end up with a, a follow-up, how to go beyond the simple usage of the BDD. Start with the context. Um, do you know why projects are still failing? We know a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of techniques to manage uh, you know how to test code, you know how to deploy code fastly, but projects are still failing. Do you know why? I hope no. <laughs> you know that um, the, the, the key factors to measure a project's success are business goals. If your project meets business goals, you have the time have you finished your project on time? And the last one is budget. Have you finished your project over budget or not? Today we are focusing uh, our presentation on the business goals. 60% uh, of projects meet business goals. That's a metric I uh, get from the PMI, the Project Management Institute in 2017. And all, all you have a lot of um, criteria or a lot of factors that could, that could impact the, the way you, you, you make your project meet business goals. You have methodology, collaboration, communication, employee resistance, but today we are only focusing our criteria to clarity of uh, goals, collaboration, and communication. Those three factors um, have an impact on how your, your project will um, respect or get aligned with the project, the business intent. 40% of failures are made because the goals are not clearly defined. 20 because of lack of communication and also 20 with the lack of collaboration. And we will see throughout this presentation how we could avoid that or get improved and make our 60% get up to 99% of project success. Do you know, does any, anyone know something about BDD? Yes? I don't speak English. You can speak in French. <laughs> You are right. And BDD stands for Behavior Driven Development. Then your development are driven by how the, 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 the code will behave. Just a traditional process when you manage a project. You start with a business guy will give his needs to an analyst. Analyst write a requirement document, the document and give them to developers and also testers. And after that, developers make out, uh, their thing and produce the final product, which is assessed by the business guy at the end. And you have also the support team or the ops team who write document technical, the documentation. The problem with that is 
if the analyst, if the, the business change, you will start all over again and repeat the same thing. And being in an agile world, you, you, you have a lot of risk by doing this. And this could impact the, this is a friction to the, the change. And it's, we doesn't now allow this in our development process. What BDD brings? BDD brings communication and collaboration uh, amongst all those actors in a project. You, all, you still uh, start with the business analyst, the, the business and the analyst, but what's changed is that every actors and stakeholders stick to the project. And you have small cycle of communication, it's mainly communication, and they produce some living documentation, which is uh, mentioned here as a requirement, but as uh, he said, as a scenarios. You have a lot of examples to really build a um, shared understanding. You make sure everything, everyone get the same thing. I'm a tester. I know what I, what I should expect after my test. And it's the same document for everyone. And when, what the, when the, the specification changed, Every, every, uh, every actors are impact. And you have, a, like I said, a living documentation. If, my coach, if the documentation change, the code will change because tests will fail. The tester will alarm that test fails, then the, code, the developers will take on. And immediately, ops documentation will be obsolete. <coughs> Just to be uh, very concise, BDD is mainly and simply about collaboration and conversation. It's the only solution to make sure that you produce the product that the business really uh, needs. Why I put at the beginning acceptance testing? That's the really work, the, the simple workflow when you release a uh, software. You start with the create phase, then follow up with the verify phase. It's where you, you, you end up doing unit testing, uh, syntax validation, and every other uh, things related to the verify phase. You go on to go up to the package phase when you produce the actual artifact, and we release something. You put your artifacts to an artifact repository. This is the complete phase. But we are missing something there. You're missing the review phase. The, where, uh, at the review phase is where uh, the acceptance testing happens. You make sure that at this phase, what you, you, are, you want to release is really what the business are asked. Then you see how to, I said about, uh, I talked about uh, documentation require, requirement doc, documentation, <coughs> documents, but how can we write, express the business need? You have the Gherkin language. It helps express the, the business need. What are the key concepts? That's mainly the structure of uh, a feature. In Gherkin, you have two main concepts. You have features. You write a lot of features. It's like uh, in Scrum, you call user stories. It some, sometimes matches this. Uh, as you said, I said, has an actor, and it's like it's how we express user stories often. Then you have features and steps. Steps are within uh, example and scenarios. And at, at the advanced level, you could have 
also tags, which help distinguish on which tail you want to run. We will see at the end how this could help going among the going to, to improve the review phase. Then that's a simple uh, little example. You have a feature. It's for a tool I wrote. I just want to make sure that my CLI tool uh, could print the version when you execute it with the dash V. You start with the feature, show the version number. The scenario is showing the version number what you put when you put the dash V. And I describe the steps. The given is the what I have as a um, at the beginning. It's like preconditions. Oh, yes. Yeah, I like this one. <laughs> I like to be like this. Then you have given. Given is the precondition, and then the when. The when is the action. What should I? What the code should do? When I run also dash v, then is the result. Then I should succeed and end up showing the version of the tool. Let's go uh, with let's go with the BA framework. How to do it in Python? B, uh, the BA framework brings a CLI tool to automate the test. The Gherkin parser, a way to pass those documentation. A, lang a specification execution to execute the steps. And the way to automate this. To start with Behave, you install Behave. I, I, I see you notice that I doesn't put pip because there is another tool called pip env, which is uh, used in the Python community because it uh, makes development in Python more easy. Uh, then you still have behave with the dev requirements as a dev requirement to your project. The setup, the setup is simple. You have the layout of the project using behave. You have test, and you put a directory called acceptance. You have another folder, two folders called features and steps. And in the BF that, in it, that reside in your root directory, you specify where all your features and steps are located. We will start creating your uh, first features. I, I want to create a PyConf 18 uh, core service. This is my feature. The scenario is get a participant registration ID. The condition, I'm Lionel. And I have a registration ID 1. When I asked, I asked, I asked for my registration ID as a participant, the system sh uh, should return me 1. This is a simple. Uh, feature, a scenario. When you run, you start running behave the first time, and it will show that that's everything I read, and you have four undefined steps. And it helps us generating what the Python code should be used to implement the, to make those steps pass. It's like when you do TDD. But you, you see that I go from a simple documentation, a document, and I end up generating code. If the, the, the specs change, behave will notice that you recognize it as a undefined uh, steps, and you will have to implement it to make your test pass. In the third step, I implement everything. I highlighted in blue the, the part that the parser could uh, uh, help you get what you entered in your specs. I have participation name, and I pass it to my function. And you can use context, which is a, a global dictionary, to pass values between steps and between uh, features. 
as you want, as you see, I passed the participation name and also the participation ID, participant ID. So when I run again behave, I see that uh, all my two steps are green and I have to implement the other one. I also, I still have two undefined, but two are passed. That's how you, that's the process of testing with behave. Going beyond this simple case, we go to, to software release workflow two. We have acceptance testing, but what we, what we could do with behave can go beyond the, this, this simple acceptance testing. We can do compliance testing. By using tags to your features, you can write features linking, linked to compliance. You could have uh, define your specification uh, related to a, um, GDPR, for example, and implement the code to validate this in your project. You just have to tag your, your features. You could have security testing. NS is namespace, you could put everything there. You could do performance testing. All those things in parallel. Imagine a workflow like in Jenkins, the pipeline, when you have all those, those steps executing in parallel and you make sure that everything uh, are good before releasing your code. I will uh, finish by a simple um, quote of Aristotle. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act but an habit. Testing are quite often known to be hard, but it clearly isn't. When you do it, you force yourself to do it quite often, it becomes fairly easy and you quite like it. Thank you. I don't know if you have questions. Yes? Uh, the, when you start testing like this, the, well, as you described, there's a lot of steps in the project. If you, if you are trying to port a project to such uh, testing, you have a lot of steps to define. And uh, you have a particular strategy to, to start that and to, to focus on the important uh, ways to, to create these steps. Because uh, you have to describe complex actions. Mm. It's for, I don't know, for, for tests, you have to Okay, I will repeat the questions. You will, um, just tell me if I get it right. Uh, now I start a new project. That's why I start with my description of specification. But when you have the, a project already built and you want to add BD testing, how to do it? What the the the, the a great way to do it? I suggest you to how to deal with legacy code you could there is tools that could get you the graph of dependencies you start first like this then you could say that that my this demo this python modules import other modules and you try to start with the modules that have less dependencies and when you have that you say to yourself what the goal of these modules and you start from that. You write your specs and it will phase and you do like TDD. You write little, it doesn't have to be too, too precise and don't, 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 uh, don't uh, misunderstand this and confuse with unit testing and TDD. This is fairly related to what the business needs. Then it's really how the end user will use your service or your code. Then starting from that, I think is narrow the, the scope of your test. I don't know if I answer your question. Any other question? Who likes testing? <laughs> <laughs> you should test your code, really.
I see that there is no question. Then again, thank you. <laughs>